Beloved, we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the liturgical feast of the ascension of the Lord. He who became one of us, he who conquered sin and death, now goes back to his Father. Conscious that our God lives and reigns forever and ever, let us now prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries and ask him to truly have mercy on us as we now place before him all our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Beloved, let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation, and where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up and after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, Jesus was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. 
while they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a bear of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness, for the Lord the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For the King of all the earth is God, sing praises to him. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he puts all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel acclamation. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, 
and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Beloved, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so good morning, beloved. Good to have you with us again. Hope you're either having your morning coffee or had it before, because this time of the morning is usually a challenge for many people. But it is our joy to be with you. It is our joy to celebrate the goodness of the Lord together as his family. Today we celebrate the, the liturgical feast of Jesus' ascension. Jesus returns to his father. Some of you may have received a rather cute meme these past few days. The question is asked, what is the ascension? Answer, it is Jesus going back home to work. <laughs> I thought that was rather cute, especially during this time of the coronavirus pandemic. Jesus goes back home to his father. Beloved, as I pondered the ascension, I thought of three things that we could take in our own prayer time and reflection. Three things we can ask for grace to keep reflecting on so that the more we understand what it is we celebrate, the more we can not only enter into true worship, the way the disciples worship the Lord, as we heard in the Gospel of Matthew, but also we come with a level of understanding Understanding that leads to increased faith, which then makes us more effective vessels of light for his kingdom. And so very briefly, I'd like us to reflect on three things where the ascension is concerned. The practical, the theological, and the communal. Don't be afraid of the words. We will get through them quite easily. First, the practical. I too will ask the question, what is a practical reason why Jesus went back to his father? Yes, he came down. Yes, he took flesh. Yes, he became one of us, one like us in all things but sin. Yes, he said, Daddy, whatever you want, I will do. Yes, he was crucified on the cross. We are still in the Easter season. Yes, he rose from the dead and now lives eternally. But why now must Jesus go back to his father? One of the practical things I think is this. In his human form, when Jesus took flesh, he could be in only one place at one time. When news came that his friend Lazarus had died, he couldn't be where he was at the time and be present with the people mourning for Lazarus. In his human incarnate state, Jesus could be only one place with one group at one time. But what happened after he rose from the dead? We hear that Jesus now had the ability to appear and disappear at will. He's the greatest magician of all times. This Jesus could even appear to his disciples despite the doors and the windows being closed. So his body had changed into something more glorious. But here's the thing. Although Jesus could appear and disappear at will, with or without any barriers, we never hear that Jesus actually bilocated. We never heard that Jesus was with Peter and also with Paul at the same time. Yes, we are told that he appeared to many, but we never heard that he appeared to many at the same time. In other words, even though Jesus' resurrected body was now different, appearing and disappearing at will, somehow he was still limited. Somehow he could only appear to one person or one group at a time. Nowhere in scripture do we hear Jesus bilocated. Nowhere do we hear that he multilocated. Now, why would he then have to go back to his father? When love is real, it never delights in distance. 
when love is genuine, it always wants the presence of the other. In his glorified state, yes, Jesus could appear to his beloved disciples, but he knew that they would have to be scattered, be sent to go and tell the world the good news and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, as we heard in the Gospel of Matthew. But his aching heart would not allow him to be absent from any of them. And indeed, for all those who would come to believe, his aching heart would want to be with each of them. So how would this Jesus, this God, be present to each and every single disciple? Be present to every single believer? Be present to every single beloved? I must go to my Father, and he will send you the Holy Spirit, which is we will celebrate next week. The practical purpose and reason for the ascension is that God wants to be with each of us. He sent his son to reveal his face and his mercy and his love. But our God loves us too much to be distant from any of us. And so Jesus had to go so that the spirit, God, the spirit could now be present to every single believer in a way that Jesus, the glorified, resurrected Lord, could not be. God is Father. God is Son. God is Holy Spirit. They all love as one. They work as one. And to prove that the love for each of us is real, the Spirit comes to each individual and whispers, I love you. You are redeemed. You are my precious one. And that is a purpose for the ascension. Jesus returns, yes, to work from home with his Father, but he sends the Holy Spirit so that each of us will always remember that no matter what, we never ever journey alone. We never face any challenge or struggle or pandemic alone. We have our God, the Holy Spirit, who is with each of us. And he knows our fears. He knows our concerns. He knows our worries. But he whispers, I am with you. I will give you what you need. Trust me. Trust in my power. Celebrate my presence and my love, and you will find that you can face every moment confident that my grace that I give to you as my beloved individual disciple, believer, the grace I give to you will always be sufficient for the journey. We thank God for his ascension, this Jesus, because he sent God the Holy Spirit so that we can walk always with the God who is not only beside us, but now lives in each of us. The theological aspect of the ascension. You and I may know people who are afraid of certain words when we talk about God. One is the theological, the other is the philo philosophical. <laughs> people seem to be afraid of philosophy and theology, and they shouldn't be. Because both streams of thought, based on reflection and experience, actually help us to understand the mystery that is God the person and presence that is God. What is the theological significance of the ascension? Scriptures tell us that Jesus is the head and we are the body. Therefore, where the head goes, what? The body follows. It is impossible unless you take off my head that my body will be over here and the head is over here. <laughs> So where the head has gone, the body will follow. So take it from a theological perspective, and we base it on Scripture. If we die with him, what? We will rise with him. And if Jesus ascends to his Father, where the head has gone, what? We too are also present. So we are already ascended with our God, but that promise of being fully with him has not yet been revealed. It is something that has to be unfolded with each passing day and each passing year. We have a God who is head, which means we'll always be connected with him. And even more than connected, we are present with him. He is present to us by his power. We are present with him by his love. There is no separation. The ascension of Jesus does not mean that he is separated from us. 
He's not practicing social distancing. <laughs> He's right here with us because the head is connected to the body. And therefore, where Jesus has gone, we look with hope that we who are already there with him, we look forward to the things that are to come. We look forward to the things that transcends the material and the earth. Yes, we celebrate what we have and what is blessed by God and given to us. But there is more to this life than what we experience in the here and the now. There is something much more beautiful to come. And that is why I often hint to people, don't be afraid of dying. Father, you're sounding morbid. No. <laughs> don't be afraid of the concept of death, apart from the fact that it is a reality of life. Once we understand that the rhythm of life includes the wave and the crest of death, it is merely something that joins us even more closer to the head, to the one who has gone above. That is our destiny. I'm going to prepare a place for you. We have to want it, and we have to choose to be there with him. But nothing can ever separate us from that connection. And scripture makes it plain and clear. Nothing can separate us from the love of our God. If Jesus is our head, and he is, and we are his body, which we are, then we are one. Liturgically, we celebrate that we have ascended with him. But that promise is something we all have to work out. Which then brings us to the final point of the ascension, which is the communal. Each of us is blessed by God. Each of us is loved by God. But we are all given the responsibility to be the face of Jesus to others. To be the face of Christ for others. To reveal his love by our words, by our actions, by our choices. In other words, beloved, whatever the human Jesus did and taught and imparted while he was here, now he gives us his spirit so that we can not only do them and imitate them. What did Jesus also say? What I have done, you will even do greater things. You will take my word and my love and spread it all over the world because the presence of the spirit, my spirit, will be with you and in you. The community, all of us, we are a family of God. And in times like these, we need to be conscious of each other. Find out what are the needs of the other. Don't be afraid to pray for the other. We pray for a recovery of those who are sick, which we do every week and every day. We pray for those who care for the sick, that they too will have the strength and courage to carry on, but also be protected from whatever it is that's circulating in the air. We keep in mind those who are hungry, that we will either feel inspired or help others become aware of their hunger so that their needs may be met for both food and spiritual food. We all have to exercise care. And care sometimes means either paying attention to a need and addressing it, or letting go of my need and will. Father, not my will, yours be done. Letting go of it so that someone else may benefit. We are redeemed people. We are a family of God. And all of us as God's family must do what we can to lift up the other, to empower each other, choose to forgive each other, and say, come, let us walk together into the kingdom that God has prepared for all of us. Today, beloved, as Jesus ascends, let us find the courage to keep lifting our minds, our hearts, our entire beings to him. For where he has gone, we too are not only there, but we also hope to follow one day when the time is right. And may we, as we journey through this life, never forget that the spirit who resides in each of us blesses us and calls us to be his light and his instrument of love, joy, peace, and mercy to all we encounter. To him, beloved, be glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. Let us now profess our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Ask, and you shall receive. Beloved, with faith in our hearts and minds, let us now present our petitions to our God. Your response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our church that you, Holy Spirit, will continue to renew us, revive us, and bless us so that we will be lights of good news and take your word to all we encounter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all world leaders that they may choose to collaborate and allow you, Holy Spirit, to impart your gifts of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that they may collaborate and work together to find solutions to the many problems in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a decrease in crime, violence, murder in our country and in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the full recovery of those who are sick, for strength and zeal and courage for those who care for the sick, for your mercy on those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We keep in mind all those who are in need, for those who are hungry and homeless, for those feeling lonely and depressed, for those struggling with their faith. May you touch them and remind them that you, God of love and mercy, are with them always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, beloved, in the silence of our hearts, let us each offer our own petitions. For the intentions in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, as you ascend and return to your Father, pour your Spirit upon us so that we will all be effective disciples in your hands. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we share in your divinity, who humble yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin.
Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, O our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we, your people, now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Kenneth our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Forever and ever. Forever. Alleluia. Forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, the peace of Christ be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Virtual hug. Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world have mercy. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Sins of the world, have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, sins of the world, grant us, grant us peace. I exalt thee. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, oh Lord, I exalt thee, I I exalt Thee, O Lord. Beloved, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternity. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Mm -hmm. Beloved, we will now do the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, thank you, beloved, for allowing us to come to you. Thank you for allowing us into your home. Thank you for celebrating the Lord's gift of love and power and the presence of the Spirit in our lives. I continue to ask that you keep each other in prayer. Don't let down your God. Put on your face masks. There are do's and don'ts of wearing a face mask. Please update yourselves. Do remember social distancing if and when possible. And do all that we can to follow the guidelines for our health and indeed for the good and health of those around us. Again also I invite you to check the Facebook and website either Thursday or Friday to see what the plan is for the weekend. This is the weekend of the end of the two weeks trial. So the government will now be telling us what the way forward will be. When we hear from them, and when we hear from the Archbishop, we will then inform you as to what the way forward will be. Beloved, do have a wonderful, happy, and peaceful week. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing, saying amen at the end of each invocation. Beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. See you next week.